Um, uh, That's cool. You know, I'm alive now, which is cool, which is what counts. <laughs> but we're finding out all about scorpions, and please welcome your calls to give us, uh, you know, your stories of your interaction with nature. Perhaps you might have found uh, an interesting insect, a bird species. Give us a call. That's why Luke Bax is here, and our, li uh, our line is 083-913-3728 is open. We've got Elmeri Alipat van Uppington. Goeiemorgen. Goeiemorgen, Kaglego. Goed en daar. Bye, bye. Goed, dank je. Elmeri, what is your question? Yes, uh, I visited a lodge uh, here up in the Kalahari about a while ago. Mm -hmm. And um, in the morning, we found a one of those yellow ones in that horrible little uh, plastic bag. Oh. We found that in the swimming pool. So the owner of the lodge, uh, you know, dug it out with the little, uh, you know, the, the, the little mat that you use or the little yes. catchment thingy. And we kept it in the mat and we hung it outside um, probably for about an hour or two or three because it obviously looked like dead. There was no movement or nothing. Yes. And about two, three hours in the Kalahari sun, this thing started moving again. So my question is, you know, do they like water? Can, you know, can they be like a fish in the water? Or, you know, what, <laughs> what's the situation? Was the scorpion <laughs> having a holiday in the pool? <laughs> no, so probably yeah, what happened well, is the scorpion went in search of water. Uh, they, uh -huh. they do actively drink water. They don't, it's not a, re not a rare occurrence. Um, but what they can't do is they can't regulate their own body temperature. Uh -huh. So if it fell in, it probably went into complete survival mode and just ended up going into like shutting down it's shutting down itself pretty much just to try conserve its body temperature yes and then as you brought it out and put it in the sun it heats itself up and it starts to move again so it's, that is one of the adaptations to surviving in very arid temperatures they can they can't control their body temperature so they have to use outside influences so the sun or if they get too hot they go under shade Wow, the strange and fascinating behaviors of scorpions thank you very much for that call Almarie and our line is still open so what do you do if you get stung so you're out in the wild, let's say you're out on a hike somewhere, up whatever kopi or lion's head, and then you get stung. What do you do? Yeah, from personal experience, I can tell you a scorpion sting does hurt. <laughs> I've, <laughs> I've been stung before, but if you don't know what species you've been stung by, uh, the best thing to do is to get to a hospital just to get yourself checked out. Yeah. Unless you've been stung by one of the parabutus species, the, the chance of it actually causing some damage is not very good. Yeah, and I guess also remaining calm because once you start... You once, you, yeah, once you start to panic, the, the venom starts to pump, pump around your system a lot quicker. So exactly. Your, your, blood rate, your blood heart rate increases and it's the venom transports throughout your body a lot mm -hmm. faster. And of course, we, I mean, we want to uh, encourage people to go out there and explore nature and be mm -hmm. out in the wild, breathing the fresh air. But how do you manage to avoid scorpions when you're out there? So scorpions um, are not active during the day, really. They're not active hunters. Um, so what they do is they spend a lot of time under logs, under rocks, in tree bark, under foliage, so unless you're going and sticking your hands underneath them or lifting up rocks or turning over trees and stuff like that, you're not actually going to come into contact with them. Mm -hmm. But I guess obviously like a practical tip, like when you're out camping, keep your bags closed. Yeah, when you're out camping, so if you place it down a floor mat and stuff, check before you go to sleep, check your floor mats, make sure that um, there's nothing underneath. Your sleeping bag, shake it out. <laughs> when you put your shoes on in the morning, yeah. and tip your shoes upside down to make sure, and I've done that before and there's been scorpions in my shoes. Um, so it is, it is a thing you've got to actually be careful of. They, they, they go into the hiding spots you don't really think about. Oh, all right. We've got another caller on the line. Herman is on the line. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, very, very well. Thank you for the call. Uh, what is your question or your comment? Uh, Kat, uh, Luke, uh, good morning. I would just like to find out if it's a myth and if it's true that um, under black light, um, scorpions glow in the dark or they, they lit up. Oh, under a black light. Very interesting question. There we go. That's actually, oh. that's actually my own photo. Um, <clears throat> scorpions do glow under UV light. It's one of my, one of my pieces of equipment in my, in my well, I'm going to say my touring bag. Yeah. But whenever I go away, I take my, my UV torch. It makes finding scorpions a lot easier. Yes. Um, the keratin in the exoskeleton does light up under UV light. Yes. So shining, it's, when you walk around a campsite, if you really want to really be safe, you can mm. walk around with the UV light and check your campsite. And they, sh they glow brightly. Absolutely. Yeah. And even the venom does glow. So there's a species of parabutus that can spray venom a short distance. Yes. And even the, ven the venom itself does yeah. glow. Um, so I guess that might be a very useful tool to have in your camping gear if you're going to be mm. going out into the yeah, wild. Yeah, a UV torch costs you 100, 130 rand. I was going to ask the question, is it true of scorpions too that they are more scared of you than you are of them, as, as people always say about oh, these? 100%. I mean, scorpions, if we are... 150 times their size, probably more. And they can't physically do anything to us, realistically. And the chance of them getting hurt versus the benefits of them 
like attacking us. Is this, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. So they will normally, they will, will all the time run away, try to hide, try to get away from people. Yeah. Uh, Graham was saying earlier on, somebody asked on social media, how long do scorpions live? Um, it's a variety. They, they, it varies from, some scorpions can live from 10 years to up to 25, 30 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And do they make good pets? Uh, I've had scorpions um, before. I've kept them in my, in my room when I worked in a nature reserve. Yes. And um, they don't really do anything, but they are quite fascinating in terms of their, their, their functions and watching them feed and all that. Yeah. Their processes, pretty much. Oh, dude, well, thank you for allowing me to have my first interaction with a scorpion at close proximity. That was <laughs> life-shaking indeed. And we look forward to chatting to you again next week all about the help. weird and wonderful things out there in the natural environment. Well, there's still lots more to come on your Feel Good Breakfast show this morning.